March 13, 2018, I suffered a paralysis of my left side of my face. That's why you see the mouth going down. My eye does not blink, and so I've got a, a real a dry eye, and I'm hopefully uh, going to be able to fix that up because it affects my vision just a little bit. Uh, I will update this uh, intro uh, to my videos uh, when things start improving, and they will, I'm sure. At least it wasn't a stroke. Uh, remember that I have DVDs, instructional DVDs, on how to scope and uh, how to buy them and all that at the end of the video. So please, uh, please take a look at that. All right, let's get started with today's video. And I'm sorry I had to take this time, but I figured... You might wonder, why is that guy talking so funny? <laughs> All right, let's get started. All right, I got the uh, clay mounted up in the back of the van, ready to go to the foundry. And I'm backing out of my driveway. It's a cloudy day, which is good for my eye because it's not going to be a bright, sunshiny day right into my eye. And I figured, let's get the damn thing over to the foundry now. It's uh, not quite 10 o'clock in the morning yet. And uh, then I can get that uh, delivered and get it started in production at the uh, foundry. Whenever they get around to it, that is. I'm actually, I'm actually feeling pretty damn good. My speech is improving a little bit. And uh, I figure, why not? Let's go to the foundry. It's just a cloudy day. It might rain a little bit. But uh, other than that, I don't think it's going to be too bad. Just perfect day for a guy with an eye that's sensitive to the light. Perfect day. In a couple of months... This will all be green. Can't wait. Fifty years ago, this was dangerous country. This was uh, Blackfoot country up here, and uh, it was a it was a tough go. Eighteen uh, thirties uh, and forties, when the uh, trappers would come around here, and this was the uh, Bozeman Trail in the eighteen fifties and forties. Uh, you know, it was a dangerous area. When I first moved here back in the 80s, this was a this was a winding two-lane road, and uh, boy, it sure improved it since. This is Norris Pass, that's what we call it, because on the other side of the pass is Norris, Montana, which is they got hot springs and things like that. I'm heading north right now, in case you're wondering. And uh, over there on the hillside, you can see cutouts in the side of the hill. That's the old uh, stagecoach uh, route and wagon route that uh, they used to come on back in the 1800s. And down here was a homestead that was settled by a, a group, a family called Lemon. That's all that's left of it. When I first moved here, that was standing. It's not standing now. Back in the 1800s, 
This used to be a thriving uh, mining town. There's a lot of gold mining out here. And uh, now there's nothing. I, I suppose if you walked, you know, in the grass out here in the fields, this is now owned by MSU Montana State University. If you walked in the fields out here, you'd probably come across old sidewalks or foundations of an old building or something like that. But there used to be quite a, a several thousand people living right here in this little valley that, uh, well, just no longer do. And the only buildings that are left are up here just over this little rise. And uh, the grave site for the town is right there to the uh, right of that truck, or left of that truck. As you can see right there. Nobody comes to see those people anymore because the people that lived here are all gone. There was a building right there, a big stone uh, mining building, but uh, it burned down several years ago. And these stables are all that's left of uh, the town. That's all that's left. This is where I first come to the Madison River. In the summertime, a lot of uh, people float this river. Spend an afternoon uh, or morning just floating down the river, fishing the river, whatever. I love this uh, section of the uh, river because of these craggy old cliffs. A friend of mine uh, came driving through here one time and a mountain lion ran across the road and was going down to the river to get uh, water, I guess. It scared the crap out of him. There is evidence that uh, native uh, peoples were coming through here 30,000 years ago in this area. This, uh, I guess, was one of the major thoroughfares for uh, travel as far as foot travel goes and migration and hunting and all that stuff. And my kids and I, uh, back in the 80s, driving along the front part of that little hill right there, that mountain right there in front of us, um, we found uh, stone circles, which they call teepee, teepee rings. I'm sorry, my mouth ain't working too good. They think teepees were thrown up there, but there's no evidence of living there. It's just it could have been a ceremonial thing, uh, but it, it goes back quite a ways. There's a lot of evidence of uh, that sort of thing around here, and when they were building this bridge, they were uncovering a uh, toll house, because there was a toll bridge over here, and in the uh, fireplace was the uh, shoulder blade of a uh, buffalo. Uh, out there in that creek river, you can see a couple of pilings of rocks. That's where the old uh, toll bridge used to go across the river there in the 1860s for the wagon trains. Now this up here, between this hill here and that set of hills over there, is uh, Ted Turner's ranch all the way uh, up into the uh, mountains to the uh, right. Ted Turner, of course, uh, is the guy that uh, started uh, CNN back, oh gosh, back in the 80s, I guess. I don't know when he started the CNN, but him and uh, Jane Fonda both lived on this ranch. 
at one time. Not here, but uh, this was part of it. You can't see it, but out there is a whole herd of buffalo. Uh, Ted Turner raises buffalo on his ranch. And every once in a while they come down to the road here, uh, behind the fences, of course. A lot of rock climbing going on here, too. Uh, people who like to practice rock climbing, there's some great cliffs for climbing over on the other side of the river. Those cliffs right straight there in the middle of the uh, video is uh, where a lot of people do a lot of rock climbing. Ah, finally to the freeway. This is the only freeway, part of the freeway I drive on. Um, at the base of these mountains, uh, Lewis and Clark uh, camped. Uh, I don't know how long they camped there, but they came right through this area. The uh, foundry is right there in the center, right there where the uh, mountain is, at the base of that mountain. Well, there's my uh, waxes and my clay together, and uh, Elaine here is going to be working on my clay to get that finalized and get it ready for the mold maker. These uh, three pieces, one's being cast for a, 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 another gallery someplace, and these two are being uh, prepared to, to be bronze. Uh, for a gallery in Ennis, Montana, which is opening up in a couple months. So I've dropped off uh, the hiker, her name's Nancy, the birthday gift, and uh, so I'll see you guys uh, next time. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna go get Chinese. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.